You making music, Daddy? Yeah, I'm making something like music right now. Motivation on E, whole wide find my peace, dear Lord, that's your boy Chris Lee, bigger you to set me free, we both know what I can be, let me lose and reclaim my sleep, no time for sleep, I bet it all on me, I bet it all on me, I've been focused on this grind, I ain't gonna let up, I've been down for too long, I got fed up, what up, it's your boy Chris Lee, I know it's been a while since you've seen me, but this is an iteration of the Kit Back Podcast, this is called Nerd Talk, now, Nerd Talk is going to be a segue I do with myself. I might have some different guests up here. Um, this is mainly just a passion project that I've been personally working on behind the scenes. Now, Nerd Talk is basically about me talking about anything dealing with nerdum, Movies, games, comic books, anything, music, anything that's related to nerdum or, the, or the, the huge kingdom of nerdum, I will be talking about. Giving my own take on the whole nerd culture and what's popular nerd culture, what's going on, what are some hot topics, anything that is of interest to me or might be interest to you. So if you like that or you like myself, you out here still rocking nerd game, you, hey, do it till we die. Ain't nobody else going to be like us. It's just us out here. You know what I'm saying? We all we got. So if you like anything like that, if we just want to hear somebody just go on a, a tangent about how to fix certain things in nerd culture, or just give my opinions on how to fix things in nerd culture, make sure you like and subscribe. Okay, sorry for the long introduction, but without later ado, here we go. So how to fix Marvel's biggest problem. Now, I know a lot of y'all asking yourself, what is Marvel's biggest problem, Chris? What, is Marvel, what do you think is Marvel's biggest problem? I don't know. You tell me. But I feel like the biggest problem as of right now is casting quality and just straight up giving you stuff you even ask about. Like they're giving you movies or TV shows you didn't even ask about. Like who is no offense, but why do we need Marvels again? I mean, you could have Really, though? Like, could have that not been a series? I really felt like Marvel's could have been a series. And that's the problem with Marvel. You take things that are TV series quality and try to make it a big budget movie to capitalize on the big dollars. And then you take things that could be a big budget movie and make it a series. And, and when you do it that way, it still works. It works even better on your behalf. I mean, I don't know. Look at uh, Falcon Winter Soldier. That could have been a banging ass movie. Could have been. The series was good. The storyline was good. The threat was just, you know, for street level, it was good. Told you the struggle that Sam Wilson was going through as taking up the mantle of Captain America as a black man in America. And I love the direction of that because it showed what black people go through in America still today while having to represent America. I have to represent a country that don't even like me half the time, that won't be gone half the time, out the picture, and I still have to represent it at the best way possible. Why? Because I'm Captain America. Insert snap. But with that being said, I love how they really add real world of, of, of impact in these certain situations so shout out to whoever written that um that series that's a phenomenal series by the way but that could have been a movie could it not it really could come on think about it it's the same to me it's the same level of captain america with the soldier get that captain america with the soldier falcon with the soldier he ended up coming ah never mind don't worry about it but i felt like that could have been a, a decent movie i mean you gave us black widow the movie literally no one asked about. Don't get me. No way I am going there. Because these are things that Marvel done that nobody asked about. Nobody asked for that. Because here's what you've done. You ruined one of the most. One of the most. <laughs> usable characters. In any street level Avengers film. A street level film. You took a perfect villain. And made them a one off. And that's Marvel's problem. You take. Great characters and make them one offs. You show them a half an hour throughout the film. You make them the big bad. And you go, oh, oh no, they're going to beat this one. And they beat them and they 
just ride off into the sunset. Like, hell. <coughs> like, did DC ever kill off Joker in one film? And like, all right, that's it on Joker. We're going to wrap it up. No. No. Taskmaster. Taskmaster could have been the perfect street level villain for a series. Now, I'm not saying big move, but for a series, like, think about it. Taskmaster could have been a villain in Captain America New World Order. You may not be the main Maryland villain. You he he might be the hired villain. Or she could have made, you know, made Taskmaster. She, I don't really care about that. The if Captain America is a woman now, I don't care as long as the actress or the actors put, is really putting no mustard. You really leading into that role and making it pop. Hey, I'm all for it. You feel me? But with that being said, I really felt like you really ruined that possibility of having a great character development story. Like and then the, the story, the backstory to what they did. Uh, just why, Lord, why did we even make like you should have known halfway through production, like this ain't even gonna work. This ain't gonna work. We could just make this a quick little one off series, give them eight episodes, explain, you know, um, uh, explain, you know, your 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 backstory, the red room, and how you became, you know, and it, it, with the girls uh being under a uh, subdued and all that, under uh, uh, control or MK Ultra, whatever you would say. That whole storyline and she's going to kind of like free them from their, you know, mind control. That's cool. That's a great storyline. Love that. But why did you need Taskmaster? What was Taskmaster? Why, why was Taskmaster there? You just threw in somebody. Anyway, but how to fix Marvel's problem. Let's stick to the subject at hand. So how to fix Marvel's problem. You could have utilized Taskmaster, but guess what? You got a, a multiverse event that's coming so you can still bring back these characters that were one-offs right a different iteration of taskmaster right the og taskmaster right this is this was whatever but you bring a another taskmaster in who didn't proceed to take the street level of segue it'll be the big bad when it comes to street level let's say i don't know let's say kingpin hires taskmaster to to you know, go after Daredevil and some whatever story plot, and then Daredevil team end up running to Spider Man because Spider Man Peter Parker's investigating the same thing. Deadpool is you know somewhere in the mix. I don't know how you tie him in because he's just there, but you can add them two together. Boom, we're partnered up now. We street level going after Taskmaster and and you know and Fisk. So you really could have played with that a lot. You know, what I'm saying like you really had a lot of. You had a big sandbox there, Marvel, that you could have used, right? But you, you ruined that. So here's how to fix a lot of these problems. So let's start with one of the biggest problems right now, the T'Challa situation, the Black Panther situation, the Kang situation, casting situations. How do we fix these? Because right now we're sweeping them under a rug like it never exists. You gave us a... And spoiler alert, if you have not seen Wakanda Forever yet, I don't know what the heck you're doing. It's on Disney Plus. Get somebody password and go watch that real quick before you finish this episode. All right. It's on Disney Plus. It's there. All right. It's probably on TNT at this point. But what I'm saying to you is if you see the end of Black Panther Wakanda Forever, you know that they brought T'Challa son in, T'Challa Jr. They brought him in, right? So you introduce young kid T'Challa or T'Challa's son, which is T'Challa Jr. Let's just say JR. Let's say, let's say TJ, right? Just for you know purposes. TJ, you bring in TJ, and now TJ is introduced to his auntie. Hey, I'm actually TJ, you know, cool. So now this is what you could do street level. Mind you, Marvel for the last few years have been focused so much on cosmic, right? They try to go to space. They take it everything up to space. You just had the the uh, Guardians of the Galaxy said they they sent off film that was like that was one of the last great Marvel movies by the way like that was it that was all she wrote after that dog but you gave us that right then you did the Marvels which is pretty much cosmic as well right so you you then you did Secret Invasion which is technically you know so I mean, even if it wasn't it was so focused on the invasion and anything else outside of them was just minuscule to them so you still could have kind of like you know because you know. Added a little bit of backstory 
with anybody else. And I feel like this is what Marvel can do. Not a reset, but a fast forward. Because if you do like a five years later, right? So let's say we're doing a series, and this is what I think. Do a Young Avengers, but not a Young Avengers movie. We don't want the movie. We don't need it. Eh -eh. Don't want it. Don't need it. Why? Because I feel like you're going to drop the ball big time. Big time. We lost faith in you, Marvel. We don't think you can do it. But this is what we think you can do, though. You can make this a series. Think about it. The demographic is there. The young adult, the young tween adult, they love a good series. Add some real life depth to this. Now, just don't make it on the surface, right? So now you got a Young Avengers series. Think about Runaways, right? Think about what they tried to do with Runaways, right? They was old to something, right? I mean, something, right? So, or look at what they're doing with, with Percy Jackson, right? Like, I mean, I like I like Percy Jackson. I like, look what they're doing with that. So, Marvel, biggest strong suit has always been a uh, 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 the, the, the tween, the young adult, the young teenager type of an action, type of a, a adventure film. That has been their bread and butter. That's been their go-to. That's been their Uno card. That's been that, that, that joker. They at the spade game, they, uh, you know, that's been they go to use it as a series. Because if you use Young Avengers as a series, you then could develop each of these characters at your own pace. You do not have to fast forward these characters or so just throw them in there, Taskmaster. You don't have to throw them in there, but you can develop each of these characters at your own pace. Who's to say you have to do one season? You could do one, two, three seasons. I probably wouldn't go after three because you want to put them to the big family too. You want to groom them, train them up, you know what I'm saying, speed it up, and then put them into the big film because now we all know who they are. We root for them now. So doing Young Avengers, you already got Kate Bishop. You already got the setup is there. The setup is there. It's there. You already, you already, put, it, you already put it up there. You already put it there. I'm just adding on to it. So you already got Kate Bishop, right? Which is super, probably one of my favorites. I, I love Kate. I love the Hawkeye series. Came out during Christmas a couple years back. Oh my! This is what I feel though. Follow me here because I'm going to the place. Take the director. I don't know who the director is. I will look it up in real time, but don't want to be awkward looking at my phone. But if you find the director for the uh, Hawkeye series, take that director and use that director to direct the young avengers film oh uh, sorry young avengers series oh my god oh my god like think about and a lot of you might be like why why will we do this chris why think about this certain scenes in hawkeye gave me gave me promise that this director is going places like remember the opening scene with kate bishop crawl to the top of the school, try to make a prank, and she she made a bet with one of her homegirls. Like, look, I got this arrow. I'm like a champion and all. You know what I mean? But I can hit this bell from this distance. No, you can't. Bet. You know what I mean? That whole sequence there is like un... <laughs> that's un... Um, that's what you call it. Uh, that's unsupervised teenagers doing teenager stuff right which is like is as is, is real as possibly it can be right that's just like we all know what ill-advised teenagers are up to they're up to no good so if you take that same premise and take that ill-advised just that moment just that glimpse that moment just her just uh, having a boo boo a uh, uh, mess up take that moment right and take a young avengers crew just like we all just here we all super we all very arrogant we all think we the best. We all button heads. Who will be the leader? You ain't the leader. I'm the leader. You, I can do this. You, dude, that is, that is, that is, dude, that's the secret sauce. That's what you need right now, right? You got a little, you got a little bit of a stare, a, a stare off, you know, between the testosterone, between a young T'Challa, right? A, 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 a guy, a young T'Challa in a, in a, in a young Kane the Conqueror or something like that, right? Uh, like, like you know, Iron Lad. You got like a little stare off between them two. Like, I'm number one now. Look at me. I'm the captain now. I got one of those moments. You know what I'm saying? Like, you you can ask so much of a playful, uh, tween type of a um, a teen type of a, a a twist to it, but make it fun, right? Make it fun. Not you know. And I think 
if you do it as a series, you can then make it your own. You can make it at your own pace. You can add the character development that you would not have had in a movie because you're trying to give everybody action. You know what people come to see Marvel movies for. You know why they're here. They want to see high-flying action, bright, vibe, vibrant colors, and, and, and oh, my God, moments. And That's what you want to do. Instead of trying to focus on so much fan service, make it a series. Take your time. Peel back them layers. Wine and diner, serenade her. You feel what I'm saying? So then at the end of season one, you already got the setup. Season two. So by the time they wrap up on season three, these are veterans now. You and they household names now. So you then put them into the next Avenger film that's already slated for what 2030? We got time. We got time. So boom, by that time, they kind of make their cameo as a young Avenger squad of the new. Avengers B team rather and bring them into the fold. You already would have known who they are. You already know who they are, what they what they all about. These two used to hate each other. Now they like this, thick as these. They got like a kid in you, a Vegeta Goku type of what's that? I don't know, a Vegeta Goku type of a vibe going on right now. You know what I'm saying? Kate Bishop didn't like uh um, uh, Aunt, Aunt, um, Aunt Man's daughter, I don't know her name's gonna be in that, you know, but they didn't like each other for whatever reason, or woo woo woo, bring them in. Are you ready for the ball to drop? They need a mentor, right? They gotta have a mentor. The younger Avengers gotta have a Who's gonna be their mentor, Chris? Well, who's gonna be the babysitter of the younger Avengers? Who's gonna be the babysitter? I got a few guesses. I got a few guesses. I got a few guesses. Guess number one, you could add Clint Barton, right? You could add Hawkeye. Hawkeye could be one of the babysitters, right? He could be, he could be the one like, oh my God, you know, because think about it, his whole personality is like, I ain't got time for this today, right? You need that I ain't got time for this today type of a vibe. Like, I got to do what with these kids? Ah, you know. So, you know, you have a lot of what the F moments. I need a cigarette moment. These kids are getting on my nerves moment. You know what I'm saying? That, that, that'd be the perfect chemistry, right? And then let's say who else you could bring here, right? I mean, you don't want about it to be, you know, too bland or too flat. So I think you could do that. Uh, maybe a Happy Hogan, right? Happy Hogan can kind of be like the mentor, right? Because he technically was like, I mean, he kind of took over for Iron Man after Tony Stark dies. He took over to kind of mentor Peter Parker, right? I mean, that could be almost like a sense of a babysitter. Think about it. Who has the tech? Who 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 has access to all of Iron Man tech still? Who has the access to all of Iron Man Claire's? Woo, boom, you got Happy Hogan, right? Let's just say, just throw him out there. You can't say you got uh, 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 Sam Wilson because he's clearly Captain America now. He's busy, full-time busy. You know, Natasha Romanoff is gone. She's not in the picture no more. She's out of here, right? You could say Siri, Right, but I just don't. Uh, uh, Shiri, I don't know. If Shiri really fits that role because it won't really gel just right. You need that that aggravated adult. You know what I mean? You can add it a Hulk, right? You you can add it a Hulk as the mentor, right? That's somebody. Hey, he's played out. Play on his anger. Like, how can you? So it's it's you can take one of the ex Avengers and make them. I personally vote for Hawkeye personally, and you put him in as a mentor. And being a mentor, he's not there in every episode. He might be episode one. He might be after episode one. He might appear again, maybe episode five or something like that. And just kind of like because it, it's their show, it's their setup. But he just there's ah y'all ain't turning up in here, right? And then no, nothing missing. All right, what, what you got over there? What you drink? And all right, I'm gone. You know what I'm saying? Like, have one of those moments, right? Have one of those moments there, and then you can still let them develop on their own, right? The Young Avengers. So think about it. You already shown, they already shown him groom the young Kate Bishop. Think about it. What other mentor from the Avengers who was put in the position where they had to mentor a younger uh, uh, protege besides Tony Stark, who's not here? Who else you have? Don't worry, I'll wait. No one but Clinton. Nobody but Hawkeye. You see them on screen. You see this chemistry with Kate Bishop. I love it. Take that chemistry and put him as the mentor of the Young Avengers. He pops in, he pops out, pops in, he pops out. And then guess what? He might need a little help. War Machine. You go ahead and bring in Don Cheeto's um, Rhodey. 
bring in Rhodey is to oversee, right? So now you got Rhodey, and then you got Clinton Barton. Uh, uh, Barton. So now you got Hawkeye, you got um, you got War, that War Machine. So War Machine is a little bit more on the tech side of it all. So he kind of had like the tech side of the, the, the younger vendors, and then Clinton can handle one of the street level for us. So you got two mentors who can probably bump heads on how they mentor the group, have some moments where they like, I feel like I should mentor them this way. And the other one might have a civil war moment. Like, no, I feel like we should mentor them this way. So you kind of have a lot of moving parts, but you have time to develop that chemistry. Young Avengers, that's what you can do. Young T'Challa, you show them on the end of uh, Captain, uh, the end of uh, Wakanda forever. Age them up, let's say five years later. So if you do like a five years later scheme, right? If you're doing a five years later scheme, guess what you're doing? Guess what you're doing? You're now giving time for Marvel to find that perfect young actor to fill the shoes. Now, I'm not saying wait five years in real time, but five years in the MCU. Because the MCU have not been focused on street level, anything street level for quite some time. They all been cosmic. Remember, you had uh, uh, the Marvels, cosmic, right? You had uh, uh, Guardians of the Galaxy. Cosmic, right? You know what I'm saying? You had Secret Evasion, which is technically kind of like Cosmic, because every, they wasn't really focused on nothing else outside of just what was going on in front of them, right? So you still can kind of go five years later, and then kind of like, you know, casually throw in a aged up young T'Challa, throw a 15-year-old T'Challa, oh, there you go, don't, don't worry about it. Five years passed, five years, come on, don't, don't, don't ask me any questions. The blimp, the blimp, go ahead, go ahead, yeah. yeah. So you do that, you got a young T'Challa. Now you got a young T'Challa you're grooming to now potentially take the seat of the new Black Panther. Yeah, yeah. So now you are developing his storyline. You're developing who he is. He He's now taking on the role of his father. Oh, heavy the head that wears the crown. The world is on his shoulder. Everybody's looking to him. The new prince, the new king. Oh, my God, he got so much burden on him. Everybody's looking to him to do the right thing, but he's keep messing up. He's not quite his father. And people talking about why he's not quite his father. And he has to live up to it. You know what I'm saying. And now you have that moment when he step into the role at the end of season one. So that's what I'm saying. So you give these characters time to develop, and you can play and peel and let that chemistry just gel itself out. Buffer that car out real quick before you throw it out there on the road. Buffer it out. But at the end of season three, Maybe, maybe a strong season two, all right? Maybe a strong season two. Then you already would have developed young Avengers who can then eventually take the stables, take over the stable, take over the ranks as the new Avengers because you don't put them in school. Who's the same might, do a, a, might throw a couple of young X-Men in there? I don't know. A few young X-Men cameos. I already heard there was... What's her name? Chloe, Chloe Bailey, uh, uh Bailey, uh, one of the Bailey twins, the one that did um, uh, um, uh, uh, Little Mermaid. I forgot her name because uh, the one that did Little Mermaid. Y'all know who I'm talking about. I, I heard rumors that she might be the new Storm for the X Men. Right, right. Who's to say you might add her in there in let's say season two as a a cameo to the young T'Challa. Ah, uh, add that love triangle there. Ah, uh, you know what I mean? So, boom. So, now you're throwing in some mutants there. Now you kind of kill the three birds with one stone. You're getting that problem solved. Come over here and get some of this. So, then by the time it the big screen, that, that chemistry would already be, oh, uh, you already got that worked out. You can carry that. You can then build on that storyline. This is what you can do, Marvel. Don't give us projects we didn't ask for. The latest Ant-Man film, did we really need it? No, we did not. However, I understood what you're trying to do. You're trying to introduce Kane the Conqueror, which is cool. cool. But couldn't he be like a Fantastic Four villain? I don't know. But I'm just saying. So with that being said, I understood what you said. It's a quantum realm. You want to explore that, which is cool. We appreciate it for what it's worth, right? But, I mean, did anybody ask for the Marvels? No, not really. Didn't see it. Didn't care to see it. It was on Marvel. The, the the Disney app, you better believe I'm all in there. But for the meantime, no, I mean, you know, nobody really asked for it. But is it, you know, we appreciate it, right? We appreciate it. We are happy that you've done it. Like, okay, thank you, right? Thank you for putting these characters together because this is cool to see them work together. This is cool to see them kind of gel and, you know, that's cool. That's cool. All right, all right. But uh, what else you got? You know what I'm saying? 
So with that being said, I'm just saying this is how you can fix it. You can really build on the Young Avengers. Excuse me here. Get my black shit up there. So what you do with that, you can actually add into these 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 characters and the Young Avengers is how you can fix a lot of your problems. A lot of your problems can be fixed through the Young Avengers. You can add in so many different cameos, so many different storylines, plot lines, sub lines, uh, Riri, Riri Summers, you know, not Riri, yeah, Riri for um the, the Ironheart, right? She's clearly going to be a Young Avenger. We kind of dropped the ball with her on Wakanda Forever. Let's be honest. We dropped the ball. It was it was building up like it be some promise. But then when the whole show, everything went down, the big unveil, we were like, what in the beta boards is this? Is this beta boards? Are we watching Fox Kids? I don't know what's going on right now. Why am I looking at beta boards? Why am I looking at Ultraman? I don't know what I'm doing right now. I don't know who this is. This ain't who I thought it would be. This is bad CGI right here, Marvel. Bad CGI. Let's recalibrate. So this is how you recalibrate. You bring her in during the Young Avengers before her show takes place, by the way. Because if you do it this way, you can kind of like, explain a little bit of what she been up to outside of Wakanda Forever film. So then now you show her jail with this team. After that, you then show her segue into her series. Now, I know a lot of people might say, well, why would you do that? Why would you do that? Why wouldn't you do her series first? Well, here's the thing. Her series first is only going to solve her problem, right? And you're going to waste too much time because they already got a full slot. You can waste too much time trying to explain just her story. If you do it as a Young Avengers, you can kind of get everybody's story within one to two seasons. She may not be on season two, but she's going to be on at least one. Of the, she might be on you know season one throughout season one and season two. She's off doing her own thing. They may have some cameos on her show. They may not have some cameos on her show. You see what I'm saying? But that gives her the, the, the fast track to her character so by the time you come out with Ironheart she would have already developed the one year fails mistake she already got her open scene she's she's on somebody's butt opening the scene she's slapping cheeks you feel me you ain't got to go through that origin all over again you feel me so if you do it that way you would have fast tracked it her situation on top of fixing the T'Challa recast situation and if you add in a young storm like I said before then that's kind of added in the X-Men kind of, so you kind of like gelling out everybody gelling together, right? You're making everything almost like unison. So when other big films take place, these characters would have already been developed and ready to go to war to clap some cheeks, you feel me? So that's all I'm just saying. That's how I say you can fix some Marvel problems. This is only part one to how you can fix Marvel's problems now it's gonna be maybe a five-part episode but this is just episode one all right so if you like what you heard so far or if you disagree with everything i said or a little bit of what i said man hit me in the comment section because i i, I want to hear y'all thoughts maybe i'm off maybe i'm off maybe i'm wrong maybe i'm right who knows but just comment make sure you like and subscribe though because i'm trying to grow my audience all right let me help you help me let's grow together you feel me peace